also, who likes to show up to eat? <laughs> right? <laughs> Me too. So let's imagine we're going out to a fancy meal with all your favorite foods, everything you like. But I've got to warn you, I'm going to talk about factory farming and about why I'm vegan. OK, you ready for this? <laughs> um, so you should know I'm a lot like you. I grew up eating meat, dairy, and eggs like everyone I knew, and perhaps like you do now. I didn't think very much about it. But then I learned what happens to animals in our food system, and I was horrified. It all started when my grandmother told me about how veal calves are chained by the neck in crates <clears throat> for their whole lives, unable to move, and immediately said I would never eat veal. Then I learned about the inefficiency of animal agriculture and how we could feed more people with fewer resources and less land by eating plants instead of animals, and that we're destroying rainforests and other precious ecosystems to grow feed for farm animals. I didn't want to be part of this cruel and destructive system, so I went vegan. That was back in 1985. Then, so a little while ago, <clears throat> then I started visiting farms, stockyards, and slaughterhouses to document conditions. I saw animals in crates where they couldn't move, animals abused, cowering in fear. I saw animals too sick to walk who were literally dragged to their deaths. I learned that this system is so harsh that every year, hundreds of millions of farm animals die before even reaching the slaughterhouse, hundreds of millions. And they're written off as acceptable economic losses to an industry that sees them as commodities, not as living, feeling animals. And I would find living animals discarded, sometimes in trash cans. I started rescuing them. Our first rescued animal was a sheep who was dumped on a pile of dead animals behind a stockyard. It was a hot, muggy day. Uh, the stench was overwhelming. Maggots were th so thick you could hear them buzzing as they devoured the carcasses of dead cows, dead pigs, dead sheep. Then off this pile, a sheep lifted her head. She was alive. We were stunned. We rushed her to a veterinarian, thinking she'd have to be euthanized. But as the vet examined her, she perked up, and then she stood up. We named her Hilda, and I'm happy to say she survived and lived with us for more than 10 years before dying of old age at the sanctuary, not at a slaughterhouse. <laughs> Hilda had been thrown away because she was too sick to walk. But every year, hundreds of millions of farm animals are discarded solely because they have no economic value. Did you know that every year um, at hatcheries, you have adorable baby chicks who are killed Sometimes they're killed by suffocation or by gassing. Sometimes they're literally ground up alive. Why? These are the unwanted male chicks of the egg industry, and they have no economic value. They'll never lay eggs, and egg-laying breeds don't grow fast enough to be profitable for meat, so they're killed. For every one of the 350 million hens that are exploited for egg production in the US, there's an unwanted male chick who was killed at the hatchery. And factory farming isn't just bad for animals. It's also bad for the environment, and it's bad for us. It's a leading cause of our planet's most significant ecological threats, including climate change. And it's a leading cause of our nation's greatest health problems, including heart disease. It's been estimated that we could save 70% on health care costs, 70% by shifting to a whole foods plant-based diet. Think about that. Thankfully, there is a growing awareness and more people are leaving meat off their tables, which is great news. But the egg and dairy industries are also responsible for enormous suffering. For a cow to produce milk, she has to have a baby, just like human beings and other mammals. They don't just magically lactate. So on dairy farms, cows are forcibly impregnated year after year, and their babies are taken away from them at birth so the milk can be taken and sold for human consumption. Think about how unnatural that is for a second. We're taking the milk of another species and drinking it, and we're separating mothers and babies. This is TEDx Hoboken Women. Can I ask the mothers in the audience, how would you feel if your baby was taken from you at birth? It's tragic for humans and also for cows who are sensitive, emotional animals. Sorry this is getting so sad, but stay with me. We're, we're almost through this. Like other farm animals, Hens in egg production and cows on dairies are pushed beyond their biological limits. Hens produce 10 times more eggs than they would in nature, and cows produce 10 times more milk. Can you imagine the extreme physical demands on their bodies? 
This causes them to break down. In a healthy environment, hens could live more than 10 years, but in modern production, they're killed after one or two. Dairy cows can live more than 20, but on modern farms, their bodies break down and they're slaughtered for beef after just three years. Exploiting animals for food is an affront to our empathy, an affront to our humanity. And when the co topic comes up, too often people say, don't tell me, I don't want to know. But I don't think that's a good answer. I think it's important for us to make informed choices and to take responsibility for our actions. The good news is that we can each make choices that we can feel good about, that are aligned with our values and aligned with our interests. I think most people would rather not support an industry that causes so much harm. The good news is that we can live well without meat, dairy, or eggs. In fact, we're better off, and so are other animals and the earth. Most people, I believe, would rather act with compassion instead of cruelty, to eat food that is nourishing instead of food that makes us sick, and to support a food system that doesn't destroy the planet. The good news is we can do that. Eating plants instead of animals is the way that we can all make a difference. To me, being vegan is living in a way that is an aspiration to not cause unnecessary harm and to live as kindly as possible. And I think for each of us, that's a choice we can make. Thank you.